Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, yep, my name's Sarah Young. I'm gonna see, I'm jet lagged, so we'll see how I go. Um, hello, this is me, my name's Sarah Young. Um, you may also notice um, this is the time in Australia, so there you go, it's Friday at seven o'clock in the morning, joy. Um, I, this is my 10 year challenge. Um, it is actually 10 years since I was last in LA. So there's me with my cool student -y outfit on, yuck. Um, and that was me yesterday at Universal because clearly I was going to go to theme parks while I was here. Um, I am a security architect. I'm currently between jobs. And as you can see on my lanyard, it says I work for unknown. Which isn't as mysterious as it sounds. I think people have been looking at it being like, are you like some kind of spook or spy? No, I'm just an unemployed bum. Um, I have also worked in Europe and New Zealand. Um, if you're any good with accents, uh, you might hear that I actually sound English. I don't know, you might not as well. Um, so my job is I help customers move stuff into the cloud securely. Um, I've worked in tech for the past decade or so. I used to be a network engineer. I overuse memes and GIFs or GIFs, we won't go there, um, in my talk. Um, and yeah, just in case you don't know where Melbourne is, it's down here at the bottom of Australia. Um, so I came a pretty long way, um, as I'm sure you would do if you were unemployed. You would jump on a plane for 17 hours and come to a conference and go to theme parks because that's what people do, right? Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, did anybody come to this talk pretty much because I promised people chocolate on Twitter? <gasps> Yes! Oh my god, just have chocolate then, it's fine. Like, you can't like put your hand up now, by the way. Like, they were honest, so they get chocolate. Um, have this amazingly high quality Caramello Koala. It's not bribery, I promise. Um, so yeah, um, it's not unemployment, it's fun employment, just so you know. Um, and uh, just as well, a note, um, I have a very common first and last name. If you Google me, please Google with caution. I'm not Sarah Young, the Christian author, but there's her book. Um, it cost $30. I found it in Hawaii, so I didn't buy it because I'm not religious and $30. That's kind of expensive. Um, also, I'm not a late 80s porn star. Um, I'm actually not joking. Like, so please don't like go and look that up on a work machine because it is true. So I don't want anyone to get in trouble. And finally, before I actually start my talk, I get asked this a lot when I'm in North America. Um, it seems to be a North American fascination, but yes, everything in Australia can kill you. This will kill you. This will kill you. Funnel web spider will kill you. Jellyfish will kill you. Crocodile will kill you. This ripped ass kangaroo will kill you. That's, that's not made up, by the way. That kangaroo is real. He's called, oh, I forget his name, but he died recently. It made the news in Australia. Oh, and this cockatoo will drink beer. So in summary, yes, everything in Australia is trying to kill you. If you want to talk to me about that later, feel free. Um, I just thought I'd cover that one off because lots of people seem to talk to me about that in America. Um, so what am I talking about today? Let's I've wasted like three minutes of my lightning talk. Um, I'm talking about container security. And uh, as you can see, I'm an excellent Photoshopper. This is me and Mr. Robot. Obviously, we like get together at the end of this presentation or something, I don't know. Um, and this is a play on how to lose a guy in 10 days. Now, if you haven't seen that movie, basically, Kate Hudson, who's called Andy, I think, she decides that she's going to date a guy and she's going to make all the common mistakes that women make during dating to try and drive a guy away in 10 days. So I thought I would flip that round and see if I could make all the common mistakes people make when they build a containerized environment and set up containers and see if I could lose a container in 10 minutes. That, that was kind of the premise of it. So basically what I'm talking about is good security practices for containers, Kubernetes and related tools. Now I know there are other orchestrators out there, but let's face it, I think Kubernetes is pretty much winning out, so we're going with Kubernetes. If anyone wants to come talk to me about other orchestrators at the end, I have my own rants about them, so feel free. So I've broken this down into uh, five bits. I'm going to talk about protecting your data, caring for your operating system and orchestrators, checking your privilege, shifting left with containers, and then getting my containers owned at the end, which was my actual experiment. Um, yeah, so I <laughs> managed to get four minutes in without saying anything much, so let's go. Um, this pretty much sums up container and Kubernetes security for me. It's not really the emojis, but it's see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Now, what I find is 
When people start to set up a containerized environment, and often that goes hand in hand with moving to the cloud. Now, I know that's not they're not always mutually exclusive, but I'm going to talk about that a lot in this presentation. Um, though I know you can put containers on-prem, though I don't know why you'd bother. <laughs> What people seem to do is they're like, hey, we have our traditional security tools, we have our traditional application stack, et cetera. Let's just pick them up and put them in the cloud. And any of our tools, they're all going to work because, you know, all our tools for traditional applications should work with containers, right? And it's fine. Yeah, I know. I see this way, way, way more often than you would imagine because um, it, it kind of sounds stupid when I'm saying it like that, but honestly, this happens a lot. So. Moving on to our common, it's not really common mistakes, I'm doing it the other way around. I'm gonna tell you the right way to do things and then I'll tell you how I did it wrong. So, good data protection practices. In the words of Mary Poppins, well begun is half done. So, this isn't really a container specific thing and most of you will probably be rolling your eyes being like, oh my God, a security person is talking about tidying up an application. Yeah, I know, like, I'm gonna do it. So, please tidy up your application. Like, oh. <laughs> Cool, drop all my expensive clickers. Um, if you're moving to the cloud and you're containerizing your application, you should be using this as an opportunity to tidy it up. Because I, I tell you, as, as part of my job, I, I saw someone want to move, a con move an application that had Telnet in it still. Seriously, I'm not joking. And you just can't do that stuff. Like if you're gonna move into the cloud and if you're containerizing things, use this as an opportunity to tidy up your application. I know that you're pushed for time and I know that you're pushed for budgets, but some of these things don't take a lot of effort. You know, using TLS 1.2 or even 1.3, don't send things in the clear. Everything should be encrypted at rest and in transit. And if you've got any other funky deprecated protocols that may be application specific, get rid of them or upgrade to the most recent versions and tidy up your code and just, just simplify. Um, this isn't even a container specific point, but really, this is half the battle. If you get this done, everything else is so much easier. Um, trust no one. Now, you can ignore like the first two sentences of this because it doesn't make any sense, but I couldn't find like any cool quotes about isolation. But looking at the last couple of sentences, isolation doesn't bother me at all. It gives me a sense of security. And that was Jimmy Page, obviously talking about containers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So really what we're talking about here is it was about zero trust. Does anybody not know what zero trust is? You can admit it. Like, it's cool. I might even throw you chocolate. Oh, there you go. Sweet. So uh, zero trust. Um, very quickly then, is nothing trusts anything when we move into the cloud. So instead of going for your traditional perimeter security, uh, where we have big castle walls with moats and catapults and arrows, everyone seems to go for the castle analogy, so I'm just going with it. But if someone breaches those big walls, they're in and they can move. Whereas when we move into zero trust, which is most obviously done by uh, Google's Beyond Corp, and if you don't know what that is, go and read up about it. Uh, basically, nothing trusts anything. So every single uh, instance and item within your environment inherently doesn't trust anything. It's going back to like Cisco ACLs where you have the implicit deny any any at the bottom. So nothing inherently trusts anything. You have to allow it, which means if someone breaches into your environment, they should make moving laterally much harder. That's the idea. Now, um, this is really, really important because if you know the shared responsibility model, uh, which is something that you'll get from every single cloud provider, they only guarantee sort of the infrastructure layer, the bit that they're essentially responsible for. But you are responsible for the application layer. And it's something that people seem to really misunderstand. So th this zero trust absolutely has to be configured by you. It's not by your cloud provider. They don't do that, so really important. So caring for your operating system and your orchestrator. So if there is one thing, one thing that you should do container security wise, it is this. Please make sure you know where your images come from. Please God, because if you just pull random things from the internet, things are gonna go badly for you. Even if you're pulling from official repositories, like there was um, quite, I've forgotten specifically what it was, but there were things in the Docker, the official Docker repository that were compromised. So when you pull a base image, I know that when you're starting off, you're gonna have to pull a base image, then you should be putting your tools on it, scanning it, 
um, checking that it's actually secure and you know, using something like check marks and then uploading it to your own private image repository. If you're in the cloud, all the major cloud providers have one. There's also like Claire and Notary. I think Notary's just become something else. Uh, I can't remember now. Um, uh, because you don't want some, I mean, because if you've pulled an image and it's already got something dodgy in it, like Bitcoin miner, malware, like it's game over already. Um, and you don't want any surprise attacks, you know, like that. So I, like, if, I, if I can't find pictures, I just put in cat GIFs. So like, that's just what I do. So uh, the fault and default. Again, I just said before, I'm just talking about Kubernetes. I know that there are other orchestrators out there. Kubernetes default configs aren't super secure. They are getting better. I mean, we're on version 13 now, and I realize some of the ones I'm talking about here are in earlier versions, but um, in enterprise environments, I'm not stupid enough to think that you're all gonna be on version 13 when it was only released relatively, relatively recently. So you need to be working through your orchestrator configs to secure them. So notable baddies are the API server listing on port 8080 with absolutely no verification, uh, secrets management, uh, secrets management being done in etcd, being encoded with base64, because that's encryption. Um, so yeah, there are some really crappy defaults and you need to be sorting them out. Um, if you're not sure where to go with this, um, the Center for Internet Security recently uh, released this Kubernetes benchmark. It's pretty easy to work through, especially if you're still, if it's still a relatively new thing in your organization. So definitely go check that out because it's pretty good. Because um, yeah, Defaults in orchestrators are scary. I first gave this talk in Seattle and I put um, Frasier in there because I love Frasier because um, Seattle, but couldn't think of a better one for here, so I left it in. Uh, finally, if you're um, a Zelda fan, it's a secret to everybody. Uh, don't bake your creds and secrets into containers. Fairly obvious, but people don't do it. They should be being passed into your container as environment variables. Kubernetes, as I said before, stores secrets in etcd and encoded in base64, apart from in the most recent version, but I'm gonna assume that most people probably aren't using version 13. Um, all major cloud providers have got built-in secrets management that you can use if you're in the cloud. Um, I would recommend using them just because it's easy. Some of them do have some limitations, particularly on size of what you store in there. So you may need to utilize a third party one, fair enough, but please do it. Uh, rotate your keys regularly. This is something that doesn't get mentioned enough, I don't think, but if, especially if you're in a cloud environment, you should be rotating your keys. Now, obviously you should automate that. So Lambda if you're in AWS or whatever, but you should be doing that as frequently as you can allow. So I don't know. If it's really important data, do it once a month. If it's not so important, maybe every six months, once a year. This is going into the kind of governance risk-based stuff that I'm going to try and avoid because I think most people will roll their eyes at me. But get the risk people to work out how often you want to do it. But just do it. Also, I know this meme is kind of old now, but this made me laugh. So, And I think it's particularly relevant for old, old versions of Kubernetes, so I left it in. I love that. So um, this is my horror story number one. Um, I'm going to apologize in advance. I have a couple of horror stories. I have to be incredibly vague because I'm not allowed to give you loads and loads of detail. Uh, they are all true, I promise. Um, first of all, Dev needed a slightly different image. Instead of going to their uh, private repository and just amending what he needed, he thought he'd just pull one from a public repository. And any guesses what happened? I'll give you chocolate. No, that was a good try. I'll give you chocolate anyway. No one, seriously? Go. There was a Bitcoin miner. Yes! <laughs> Bitcoin miner! I'm not bad at throwing, right. Yeah, there was a Bitcoin miner. It got picked up relatively quickly, but hey, nice bit of stealing of cloud computing power. Uh, so check your privilege. I'm um, not gonna say anything you haven't heard before here, but don't run as root, don't run as root. Don't run as root. Again, I couldn't find a root thing, so I went for group because I'm funny. Like, um, um, if you, I know there are some specific instances where you do need to run as root, like if your container needs to modify the host system. Um, and if that's the case, you should be using runtime security tools to try and limit the system calls and things that are using the kernel. Um, there's stuff like Acro Enforcer, SE Linux, App Armor, and SecComp profiles. Now, I know that not all of those are container specific, and you can use them in other bits of Linux. Um, 
I would also recommend that even if your container isn't running as root, you use some of these things. I know, particularly SE Linux, I haven't used my laser pointer, so I'm going to use it. Um, SE Linux has got a rep for being kind of terrible to use, but it's definitely improved in the last couple of years. Um, so try and use it. It's good. Uh, checking your privileges for orchestrators. I know I even put myself in here at KubeCon because I was really struggling for pitches. Um, yeah, um, this dude's called Fippy, and that guy's called Z. I say Z because I'm English, but Z. Yeah, anyway. Um, Kubernetes has got terrible defaults. I've kind of basically said all this, but to add a few more in, anonymous user access isn't disabled. The dashboard had full admin privileges before version 1.7. I really hope that you're not on version 1.7 anymore, but hey. Um, and they had no RBAC before version 18. Also, Rancher still doesn't really have RBAC until you get to version 2, which has just been released. Um, and if it sounds really onerous to go through this, just use a managed Kubernetes cluster from someone. I mean, there's EKS, AKS. There's loads of them out there. What I find is that people are not, people sometimes think it's shameful to use something managed when they don't have the skills. Containerization and Kubernetes is still relatively new, and I don't think there's any shame in saying, hey, look, guys, we don't, we don't have enough skills in this yet to make it properly secure. Let's use something managed. Seriously, there are still some, some open source tools out there. I've only really managed to find them for AWS, but there could be more. Um, so horror story number two, I saw a Kubernetes cluster that was supposed to be a test instance left with all its normal defaults. Um, it was left exposed to the internet. So do we know what happened? Anyone? No. Bitcoin yes! <laughs> Bitcoin miner! Hey, you've had two chocolates now. Whatever. Um, so uh, container enthusiasm for shifting left. Um, so when you um, have a security tool set, most, most enterprises will probably have something already. But you can't assume that this is OK for containerizing and going into the cloud. Most tools will need to have an add-in put in, or you may need to go from scratch. So when I talk about security tool set, I mean IDS, vulnerability scanning, SIEM, runtime security, and auditing. Um, depending on what you use, like you really need to check that they actually still work and they're doing something useful. Same goes for your CI CD pipeline. Uh, some tools may need to be altered. Often if you're moving into the cloud, it may well be the first time you're actually building a CI CD pipeline, which is a bit easier. But you need to go and do your research about what, what's actually going to be effective for you. And when I say go benchmark your tools, I really mean it. Like seriously go and do it. Get de devs and security involved in this process because we're all doing the shifting left. Devs and security, we love each other. We want to be like this, you know. Ash and Pikachu, I love Pokemon. Um, it's really, really important because if security have found a tool is great for what they need and it meets their requirements, that's great. But if it doesn't work for devs, it may not get used and that's useless. So my last horror story, um, I've seen an organization try and use old school vulnerability scanners with no, um, they're well known, I won't name them, uh, with no additional plugins. And they were telling me, look, it's great. The scans come back clear. And I'm like, yeah, that's because they can't see anything. So of course they would. So I sort of had my Trump like head shake shame. That was what I originally had for this. But then like last week after this happened, I was like, I'm replacing it with this because this is like way better for shameful picture. Um, OK, so talking about my, uh, and then moving on to my experiment. So I decided I would try and get myself owned by running up containers. And I was like, sweet, I'm going to like lose a container in 10 minutes. Oh, this is I'm so clever. Um, but no. So I've been spinning up containers and Kubernetes clusters and basically other things and leaving them open to the internet for a couple of months. Um, I did it on a cloud hosting provider that I won't name because clearly I'm not brave enough <laughs> to do it myself. Um, and I could pay through it through PayPal so I didn't have to put my credit card in, which I thought was probably sensible. And I tried to do pretty much the opposite of everything I've just encouraged you to do. Um, so any guesses for the kind of containers that would get particularly owned if I left them out to the internet? Any guesses? You can have chocolate. I may even give you my cool Australia Day sunglasses. Yeah, I know. Yes, who was that? Oh, I don't know if I can throw that far. I'm going to try. Yes. WordPress and the other main one I use. Any other guesses? Uh, I used Ubuntu for 14.04 because it's full of holes. So yeah, that's what I decided to put on the internet. Um, and because it was on a cloud hosting provider, I actually had to kind of reverse engineer a lot of the security out of it, which was a bizarre thing to do. So um, what happened? 
Um, sadly, I didn't get owned at all. Um, definitely not in 10 minutes. Now, when I wrote my blurb for the CFP, I said, oh, we're going to log into my containers and I'm going to show you how they're going to be owned and it's going to be amazing. But in fact, apparently it takes a lot more than 10 minutes to get a container owned, so we won't be doing that because there's no point. Um, I felt a little bit better last week when um, Atticus, um, she is a pen tester down in Australia. She's a great public speaker. If you ever get the chance to see her, I very much recommend it. She tweeted out that um, she had a WordPress site that didn't get um, attacked for about a month. So it made me feel slightly, slightly better. Uh, then what I did do was, I have to say, it's really difficult to like reverse engineer security on uh, cloud hosting providers because I had to like open up all the, the firewall and all kinds of and IP tables and all kinds of things. Um, I don't think, I'm sure there were probably other things underneath that infrastructure that I couldn't see and wasn't able to configure that might have been protecting it as well. Um, what I did do was, because I was trying to do this on the cheap as well, I used a tool called, I don't know how, I've never heard it said out loud, so I don't know if it's PSAD or PSAD. It's a tool that, um, it's basically like a little IDS that runs on IP tables. Um, again, it, came, it basically looks at... Um, Scans. So I thought it was pretty neat. I found the obvious stuff from uh, China, of course. Um, but then what I, and it looks up the uh, IP address and the who is record. Um, what I was loving was here um, that apparently people use this to advertise their stuff, which I didn't realize, like specially crafted and optimized for bandwidth hungry applications. Like, cool. Um, take advantage of the best deal of bandwidth on the planet. OK, cool. Thanks, Black Host from Switzerland. But my all-time favorite was this one that was called Security Trouble. Um, I was like, right, don't know. But that's from China as well. Um, so I got plenty of scans. I don't know. Um, it wasn't as exciting as I was hoping for. Shame. So yeah, um, in conclusion then, I think I've, oh, I've gone faster than I thought I would. Sweet. Um, so I wanted to be on time because I'm just before lunch, and I know the pain of like someone going over time, but just before lunch. So in conclusion, tidy up your application before your cloud migration and or containerization. Orchestrated defaults are terrible. Please change them. And please, 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 please make sure you know where your container images come from. Don't run as root unless you have to. Keep your secret secret and shift left, but make sure you have the right tools to actually support doing this. And apparently, purposely trying to get your containers hacked is harder than one would expect. Like, yeah. I've realized this is probably the worst thing to end with because I'm just like, oh, do all the security stuff. By the way, it's really hard to get hacked. Don't, don't, yeah. Great message, I know. Um, here are a couple of useful links. Um, you've got the Sys Kubernetes Security Benchmark and also the Docker one. Um, this publication is the NIST Special Publication 800-190. It's about container security. Uh, if you're not familiar with NIST, it's the National Institute of Science and Technology. It's a US government department, and they, talk, they publish white papers on a variety of technical topics. Lots of them are inaccessible and awful, but this one's only 10 pages long, and it's quite nice, and it talks about container security at a high level. Oh yeah, it may not work at the moment, but like when the government decides to work again, um, that's not a that's not a that's not a go at federal employees. Like I realize it's not their fault, but like when when the U.S. government federal government starts working again, look at that because it's pretty cool. Um, there's also a really good Kubernetes security book by Liz Rice from Aqua Security and Michael Hasselblast from Red Hat. Um, it's pretty much step by step step how to configure Kubernetes. Um, it's only been released very recently. You can get it for free as, on a PDF online, so I would go look at that. Um, Microsoft have a nice little. Uh, nice little Azure security concepts document. And this PSAD, however you say it, um, by Michael Rash, that's at this link if you want to have a play around with it. I like it a lot. Um, that's me done. I'm, I'm in time for lunch, sweet. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask me now or tweet me or find me. Everything is cool. And yeah, that's me. Thanks very much. Oh. Why not? <laughs> Anyone want sunglasses? <laughs>